it is also about uh, uh, creating um, uh, a multitude of of characters in history of uh, of uh, uh, of lives. I don't read much biography, but I do read a lot of obituaries. Um, um, uh, because they're very uh, um, incredibly informative and also coming back to a point that was already raised, uh, they also give a kind of moral judgment. Uh, so, so it's, 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 they're, they're very uh, good and, and sort of the the, uh, the New York Times, uh, as you probably all know, has started this uh, series of, of obituaries of, of women who never received an obituary when they, they died. Um, and so these are, this is an essentially a biographical project. Um, and in a way, first of all, it is retrieving uh, uh, lives uh, and people that have been forgotten and that haven't gotten their due in a way and, and whose role in, 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 uh, in history has not been uh, acknowledged. But it is also um, uh, it, it's also um, it also brings in different kinds of stories. It brings in uh, different kinds of narratives. It brings in different lives than uh, the lives of uh, a, a, a privileged male a person who has or uh, who has been groomed in a way or who has able sort of to, to benefit from uh, a, a position of privilege to enter into a, a position where he eventually he could claim a kind of authorship that then sort of becomes transformed into this kind of cult of genius. So uh, it is also through the life that different kinds of stories enter uh, the, the historical discussion. And that, and, I mean, perhaps it's just me, but I, I find that fascinating. Uh, the, uh, because it's sort of uh, uh, the lives, uh, uh, these lives make different kinds of intersections through historical events, through uh, through um, uh, through social conditions, through uh, through institutional uh, constellations, and so on and so forth. Then, then the established genius uh, uh, na narratives. So it is not about uh, uh, putting. Uh, I mean. Uh, I do think that there are still great artists to be discovered, but that's not the main thing. It is about sort of bringing in different kinds of biographical narratives into into the into the history that that, that we are telling, and that I think necessarily then relates to the, to your first point that 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 sort of clarifies and helps us to understand and helps us critique and retrieve uh, uh, the reasons why uh, voices and lives have been suppressed. In, in, in historiography. So this is an image made by Sébastien Leclerc um, in the early 1680s, uh, right after the death of Gian Lorenzo Bernini, uh, uh, with, which is a kind of celebration of the artistic genius uh, of uh, Gian Lorenzo Bernini, who is uh, shown in the middle uh, while his bust is being made by uh, the allegory of, of, of sculpture, uh, basically. And, and I also want to talk about that in a moment, uh, because it contains something that I've been looking at in a different context, and which only struck me when I, when I, when I looked at this image again a couple of days ago. Uh, the, uh, I think the inscription is very important, singularis in singulis, yeah? mm. uh, in, omnium unico, in omnibus unicus. Uh, so he's... Uh, 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 unique yeah? uh, in in the particular and uh, in everything, he, or he is um, singular yeah? uh, in um, singular endeavors. But in each of uh, each of it, uh, he's uh, he's unique. So what I like about the image is that it sort of contains, uh, I think, a, a tension that is. Uh, 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 present in the general representation of architecture and the artist and becomes uh, especially acute in the uh, in the genre of the biography uh, because as you can see the image 
was uh, published for the first time as the header to the to a preface, and that was a preface for a French language biography of Bernini that was never uh, uh, completed. Uh, because the biography, in a way, tries to point out the singularity of an individual. But at the same time, the singularity is all encompassing. So in a way, the, 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 you could say the, the, the validity of the singularity is that it is uh, that this in individual can basically do and control basic, uh, what, what, whatever they turn their attention to. And as such can also act as an example or a point of reference for all uh, and, and everything. So there, there is this very acute um, polarity between a declaration of an absolute uniqueness and at the same time uh, a universality that on one hand appeals to all but also basically pertains to all and that's also what, what, what the image uh, shows it shows that Bernini was a sculpture and you see the question of Louis XIV he was also an, an architect you see the St. Peter's uh, Palace uh, the, uh, the Four Rivers Fountain and you see the depiction of the, uh, the Scala Regia and he's even uh, uh, depicted somehow as a painter uh, with the image sitting behind uh, uh, the winged figure of, of, uh, of architecture. Um, and obviously uh, this statement is in and of itself paradoxical and I think in a way goes at the heart of not the problem of biography as a tool, or, uh, the con but also of our problems with biography today. Yeah? So I think um, uh, uh, the, the idea that you can basically synthesize something through the lens of an individual and that this something has some uh, has sort of carries more weight or ha has uh, an authority or can make an assessment about things that go beyond the contingencies of these in, in this individual are today of course highly contested uh, uh, notions uh, um, and for good reason <laughs> because uh, 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 I mean in a way you could also argue that the biography is one of the most programmatic ways of, of writing a history or, or of, 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 of taking a position at the same time of course uh, because it's so pro programmatic and then I'll stop I mean I just don't, don't want to uh, run long too, too long to stop I mean um, because it is so pro programmatic is also, is also almost by definition interesting <laughs> but it is uh, um, uh, uh, it is interesting but it is dangerous it's delicate and it is something that should be uh, uh, treated with uh, uh, with caution mm -hmm. uh, but as such uh, I, I think it it has enormous value on the different levels and, and this is perhaps something we can talk about the final remark that I want to make is about the gesture of, of the uh, uh, you could say the allegory of sculpture that is sort of making uh, the statue. <laughs> I actually just published uh, an article on this kind of images where you see uh, sculptures sculpting someone. What is actually striking in those images is the ambiguity, I think, because the, the chisel is planted right in the middle of the head. So there's a kind of ambiguity of <laughs> we were looking at the finishing touch or a mortal blow uh, uh, up to the head. Uh, so it, uh, it, it could all, almost act as, a, as an image of an execution. Uh, and also there, I think this also in a way sort of pertains to, to the biography. So it, <laughs> uh, it, uh, as a kind of absolute statement, uh, it is perhaps the ultimate honor, but it can also be sort of the death blow uh, to, to, uh, yeah. to reputation and the work. Um, so these are yeah. the kind of first thoughts on, on, on that image. Yeah. Yeah. The, I think the other thing that strikes me about this image is that um, there, is a, there is something about, um, um, let's say, producing uh, an anatomy of the, of the subject, of the character, or sort of understanding the, the physical traits, uh, yes. the kind of person it, uh, as a way into the mind or into yeah. the Absolutely. genius or into the kind of intellect, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So it is also the site of ingenue and that is sort of being uh, being sort of pointed out uh, with, with, with the chisel. No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And in a way, sort of, the, the, I mean, because this is in a way the only action, I mean, mm. or the, the most violent action in the whole image, it, it, it's sort of 
almost all, uh, uh, also indicated as kind of point of origin, almost sort of from which yeah. everything, all the rest uh, emanates. Huh? Yeah, and also it seems like the only um, somehow uh, you could say re realistic or uh, um, some the, the only thing that has attachment to the real world and exactly. everything else yeah. is clearly a, a, a work of fiction, yeah. right? Absolutely. Everything is allegorical except the the bust. Yeah. Um, Um, connected to certain genres, there is also a sort of, you know, a connected a certain necessity to develop a certain genre. We had Emma Jones here in our series with the handbooks or, um, or manuals. Um, and uh, where there is probably a certain necessity. Is there a necessity to write a biography and whose necessity is this? Well, I think that's a, a, a very important point. I mean, in a way, we can't escape biography. And that I find actually one of the most interesting uh, things about it. Huh? And in a way, I think that um, this is perhaps a very banal and general point. But it is because, I th in a way, the life huh, is the most um, available and recognizable vehicle to give coherence to phenomena. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, if you want to, if you assume that things are driven by intentionality, if you assume that things are not entirely <laughs> contingent, yeah? uh, and if you assume that there is a relationship between what people are and what they do, then you almost automatically enter into a kind of biographical perspective. Um, uh, and and that's and I, I want to be very explicit here. I'm a big, uh, I'm not a big reader of biographies. So, uh, to be <laughs> uh, perfectly honest, Susan, uh, um, I I'm not familiar enough with uh, the specific biography of, of Palladio, Schinkel, and Jefferson, sort of to 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 comment on that. But I do think that uh, 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 biography is an incredibly uh, rich and powerful tool. And, and then again, it comes back to the question, who's to and, and, and for what? Yeah. Uh, but um, in a way, uh, I think uh, as a way of testing uh, plausibilities, I think it's actually very sort of, so okay, I mean, <laughs> suppose that this person is here doing that at that moment and this happens and uh, perhaps that helps to explain. Huh? And again, uh, with, with the whole political and ideological uh, weight that uh, subjectivity, specificity, and, and so on, individuality has uh, today, these are things that you almost should deconstruct the moment that you sort of put them forward. But I think as a hypothesis, biography still, still makes a, 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 a lot of sense. I tend to generalize sometimes too much, but I'm very much interested in this relationship between architect, you know, the writer, the, the architect is a writer and the biography is a tool. Mm -hmm. uh, with these two things, uh, I would like to, you know, understand a bit better in terms of their specificity. So how really do architects write and produce uh, and what kind of contribution actually is the one portrayed by architects because actually if we look uh, really at this kind of genre f f genre uh, as you say mm -hmm. the, the kind of, uh, of, of writing typology as i mean i would like really to to understand better how uh, what kind of instrumentalization takes place right there mm -hmm. when we we are you know in front when we read an autobiography autobiography when it, then it's pretty clear that there is something going like a auto legitimization you know, there are some kind of ideological statement or claims behind. While someone else in is talking about an architect, of course, the kind of instrumentalization that takes place is of a different kind. Yeah. So I, I, you know, uh, well, it's not really a question, but, you know, yeah. it's more a kind of a remark about the, what the kind of features you found throughout your, your, your studies, your research. Um, 
which is really specific in terms of architecture, writings, and biography. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a that's a good uh, um, that's a very interesting uh, question. Um, and I think, I mean, first of all, one one of the uh, the attempts that we did because what we did with Bernie's biographies was, was very much a, a collective work uh, with Yvonne Levy and, and Steve Nostro. Um, was first of all. <laughs> Uh, really denaturalize uh, the biographies. So actually treat them as other biographies as opposed to something that is specific to an artist. So in that sense, it, it, uh, but, but I understand your question. So, and um, obviously what, what, a, what a biography does is, uh, I mean, this is very general, is take out a critical position uh, of an author, uh, of an author who more or less identifies uh, uh, with, with the subject. And then I think the question be becomes uh, in which field is the author uh, operating? Yeah? So uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, thinking back of, 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 uh, of, of Shakespeare, I mean, Stephen Greenblatt uh, uh, has written uh, an important biography or important biographical work on, 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 on Shakespeare as a way of exploring um, the notion of subjectivity, I mean, in very general terms in, six, in 16th, 17th century. So in a way, the biography then becomes a tool sort of to, to stake out a theoretical position within the disciplinary field. Huh? Uh, and uh, so it's not just a kind of it's not just about a kind of knowledge gain gain about a certain person or, or a certain subject, uh, but I think in a way you could sort of measure the state of a field. And now, now I'm speaking in, in terms of uh, within the humanities mm -hmm. about the way in which about the role that is sort of being assigned to biography in in its development. I mean, this is a very bold and also very general claim. Yeah? Uh, I mean, again, going back to architectural history and, and art history, if, if art uh, and architectural history are mainly biographical endeavors, that tells us much about how this field sees itself within society, within academia, and, 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 and it tells us much about sort of what it thinks its, its mission is, basically. Uh, uh, um, and um, so that I mean, perhaps that's too general uh, as, as, a, as a kind of answer. But but, but I think you, so. What I'm trying to say is that the, the um, so the specific of, again of, of bio, uh, uh, biography is that you interpose a person as the the crucial link between. A work and a world. I mean, this is in, in, in. So this is basically the operation I think that takes place. You have an oeuvre and that exists, and then you have a context, the world, and somehow you sort of make the claim that what what sits between these two things is is a singular person. And by making that claim, I think, again within an academic or a critical context, you take very much position about, uh, about um, uh, questions that are either related to that work or, or to the world. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, if you decide to use biography as a tool to think about architecture, you, in a given context or through a given oeuvre or through a given person, uh, I think you 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 uh, uh, you position yourself very in a very specific field yeah? uh, uh, within critical discourse. I hope that makes sense. I mean, or, or that, that's not so, so, and that that's how I think you should measure it. So, so the way to to measure what happens in a biography is by looking at the field in which this sort of biography lands. Yeah, uh, I, have, I have one, let's say, <coughs> reaction to this, that so far uh, along our Funes meeting, the Funes meeting we had, uh, uh, you know, the, the words and the concept that was 
most often uh, some kind of mentioned was anonymous history. For yeah. instance, we have Emma Jones to get, uh, with us this evening, and uh, and I remember that we we were discussing the subject of handbooks with her. You know, the, the subject anonymous, therefore completely avoid of a biographical claim yeah. was one of the things that we, we have discussed that evening. And but also with other subjects, some more or less related to tools. Yeah, yeah. Anonymity is a concept that you find. And I yeah. was also throughout my research, for instance, on handbooks and enlightenment uh, books, books, you know, of that epoch era. Uh, I would say I, this anonymity is very widespread. So perhaps the field, as you say, the field of tools, the field of making is something that seems pretty unrelated to the biography. So uh, what we try to, and we, we are pretty aware of that in a way. So we, what we try to do is, it, is to look at the biography from the other side. So you say, why, why you know, how, what is the kind of operational device that, that takes place with biography and why somehow it is not present it is not right there when we talk about tools so that's the kind of things that we would like to question ourselves a bit but i mean again to make a very i would like to question the anonymity of tools even if they're handbooks and and and, and, and so on and so forth huh? uh, because there is a situatedness there in, in in different ways and different forms and i mean tools only uh, acquire meaning when they are used. So there is a user. And of course, then, uh, the, uh, I mean, I think a big argument in favor yeah, of focusing on the tools, hmm? and I, I mean, um, um, to open up uh, the possibility to um, tell narratives or, 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 or tell histories uh, that literally start from the other side, and eh? so that uh, don't start from the big names, and, uh, but, uh, and that as such acknowledge also other actors, other mechanisms, and so on and so forth than uh, uh, than the genius. But again, I would like to caution. So first of all, I do think uh, that the suspicion against biography that it sort of uh, privileges certain agents should be taken very seriously, but. Uh, uh, should not again uh, lead us to uh, to kind of blanket condemnation of or exclusion of biography out of our historiographical or even architectural uh, uh, toolkit. Uh, again, I really believe in the poss possibility of kind of uh, 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 biography that al almost deconstructs itself from the inside out. Huh? Um, 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 because again, also going back to what Joseph was saying, so, so the, there is this kind of this act of repeat biographies is, is, is there, I think, incredibly important. And then again, the other way around, um, um, I think anonymity is a very is as is as problematic as a notion as his uh, as his biography. Um, uh, um, uh, I mean, in the sense that, um, again, uh, 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 whatever, whatever happens is situated and is somehow situated in relation to, to, to subjects to, to, and to a kind of subjectivity. And of course, you can decide to, to um, uh, uh, give that situatedness a, um, a different role or a different kind of importance in your historical narrative, which I think is incredibly important. And so, so don't get me wrong. Um, uh, but I like to see it more as a, as a field of tension than as a, as a kind of opposition. Just to build on this idea of modern subjectivity, I think the kind of a larger um, framework that we operate, we labor under, is um, the kind of long, uh, like Martin, you said you were a child of the 80s, you know. Uh, the, I've been looking into, um, you know, the, the work of Colomina, Michael Hayes, Mark Yazombek, and uh, they write very explicitly about, you know, uh, Michael Hayes, you know, says we have to stop writing about architects and monuments, but we need to write about systems, you know, it's that kind of move, there's technical systems that really determine history. And of course, it all goes back to the 60s, 
you know, the death of the author, the death of the subject. Um, it just strikes me that it's, it's, it's um, not only is it an old trope, um, I mean, 60, 70 years old, um, but in terms of the, the question of biography today in 2020, I wonder if um, the anxiety about, you know, uh, making an architect into a, too much of an individual, into a genius, is actually being inversed. I mean, there's a lot of discourse now about um, to what degree is our individuality being kind of dissolved into a soup of um, algorithmic, algorithmically mediated um, information. And I, I don't think the struggle anymore is, is you know, to, um, we're not struggling in my view against the individual, we're sort of struggling against anonymity, against all thinking alike. And the, that moment of individual creativity that, as you say, is in a way um, figured in the biography that places the person between the work um, and, um, and yeah, the person between the author and the work. I, but that moment of creativity is, is, um, has a political meaning today in a, in a different way mm -hmm. than it did in the 80s and than it did in the 70s. I don't think we should be as embarrassed about actually um, being interested in individual, creative yeah. and critical yeah, yeah. Uh, gestures. Yeah. No, no, no. But, uh, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Um, and um, I think th there's really interesting work being done now um, uh, uh, that is exactly about, about I think, what, what you said, this kind of retrieval of subjectivity and, and retrieval of these, these sort of moments yeah, when um, uh, um, or, or, or a retrieval of voices and, and of, of, uh, of, um, of specific utterances in, 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 the, um, in the enormous, uh, uh, within the enormous production of, of, of um, uh, 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 texts and discourse and images uh, uh, and so on. And where you say, obviously, one of the, the, the discoveries we we make each day when we curate our uh, spotify <coughs> um, uh, lists and so on is, is, is how, how indeed our individuality is completely dissolved into uh, uh, into big data huh? uh, so uh, no no I, I i totally agree but i do think there is um also their kind of, uh, of tension so personally i'm more and more interested in in the voice of of also of, of architectural historians. So uh, currently we're doing a, a, a PhD seminar uh, uh, where I basically invite people to talk about their work. Uh, uh, so I, I actually invite them to, to uh, reflect on something they've written 10 or 15 years ago or less uh, and talk about the circumstances in which they've written it. Uh, um, uh, and with, which is uh, partly, uh, it's a bit of institutional history, it's a bit of, uh, of history of a discipline, but it's also a history of persons, uh, uh, of people just landing somewhere and say, wow, this is actually, this looks interesting. And I, th I think this is, this is absolutely uh, relevant for us in order to understand, uh, again, how we produce meaning in our work, yeah? uh, because it is all situated uh, somehow. So, Coming back to uh, uh, Gregorio's remark about sort of these these um, these bios that we send in for conferences or, or uh, that we post on our websites, I mean, uh, I'm sure we all recognize this. It's always excruciating to listen to that because it is um, uh, um, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 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 say so, okay. I mean, actually, that's so not what it is about. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, uh, and and then that's also part of of this kind of um, uh, very generic production of, of 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 utterances and discourse where this kind of biographies fits in and uh, 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 and so on and so forth. So, so I, I really. Uh, subscribe to your idea of, sort of saying that in a way uh, what we should do critically is also sort of resist mm -hmm. this dissolution and, and, and the voices there but again what I, what I was wanting to say, what I wanted to say by, by going back to this introduction is that 
uh, one thing is sort of retrieving a voice and a position and, and again a positionality and a situatedness. The other one, the other is writing a biography. I think there too there is still a very interesting uh, uh, tension. Uh, 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 and it, it is, I mean, going back to what Greg said, it has to do with sort of the tension between the work and the anecdote. No? Right. Yeah. Uh, so in a way, the anecdote, I think I totally uh, value the anecdote as, a, as, as this, this, again, this, this moment, this sparkle of subjectivity. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> uh, at the same time, its relationship to the work is always problematic. Yeah? Uh, uh, it's interesting and, and, and seductive, but also problematic. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's an interesting point, as I as I said in my question, and um, uh, and and obviously, if you read uh, these like uh, feminist texts uh, dealing with the with the canon, um, then there is always the question how to define the subject. You know, if you define it through the like. Um, most in interesting and most important works of the art and uh, how do like women for example fit into uh, this because there were I mean as, as Linda Nochlin um, argues um, there were some structural um, problems you know uh, often women were uh, had to face uh, depending on education um, represent representants uh, in in all kinds of uh, professional uh, great uh, like organizations and uh, you know not receiving so many um, prizes you know like working with their husbands uh, basically losing their name because like if you marry you you basically lose like the half of your career and, and so on and so forth so you know there is like a whole um, and and also like this question of the name is also quite interesting so so yeah so so like dealing with this uh, or for example like when I'm now going to the archive you know there are like these estates of the women uh, they are kind of subsumed into the men's estates yeah. as if the women didn't have any subjectivity um, on their own so yeah so I mean this is like uh, quite quite challenging for me as well and and also like this question of the death of the author if you know, this was maybe like some kind of an would if there would be a possibility to reinvent the notion of of the author, you know, uh, in a way, because uh, because um, for this like type of feminist historiography, this category of the creative genius does not work so well. Yeah. But on the other hand, you know, it's it's somehow you have to be able to prove that there was like some some creative output of these women. So yeah, so I mean, if, if I should declare the author, this pattern, paternalistic figure, so to say, you know, and then like, say, okay, so we are beyond that. Or, yeah. you know, if, if you have any, um, any observations on that topic, because that's something I, I have been confronted with just like recently. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, these are absolutely, um, I mean, uh, these are really um, very substantial and important uh, uh, problems. And uh, I think what, what you point to uh, is that there is um, uh, an, an, um, precisely because there is this very, very well established uh, body of anecdotes, very well established uh, 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 ideas, series of ideas of how a biography uh, 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 must be written, you know, sort of, so which are ingrained basically in, uh, in, in, in humanistic culture, That's, that identifies writing a biography with you know, the cult of the genius and, and the genius being uh, white male uh, and always a single genius. And um, so uh, this is a real problem, uh, but um, what I find, and what we could do, and and I'm only half joking, and I'm actually not joking. We say, say okay, now we're going to sort of put an embargo on biographies of Michelangelo for um, ten years, uh, and the only biographies we are going to write is about um, other figures, be they female, whatever, uh, who, who who have been. Uh, uh, forgotten because 
for all the institutional historical discursive mechanisms that you you uh, uh, you you have been describing, there is uh, bi uh, biography has been this incredibly powerful tool of hypercanonization. Yeah? So I think uh, you can sort of uh, uh, once worked a little bit on it uh, by by students. So you have this, uh, where we just measured the number of biographies per name, and, and you could see the, 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 the concentration of biographies on Michelangelo, I mean, if you look at art, art, arts and artists, uh, uh, artists and architects, um, it's ridiculous, basically. It's like uh, 15, 20 names that sort of take up 90% of the market, you could say. Huh? Um, and, but at the same time, I think biography is an incredibly powerful tool to actually address, I mean, to make these problems explicit. So, uh, so, in, uh, so I, uh, and what I really think is, 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 is uh, crucial there is that in a way, um, uh, if you can use biography as a way of showing how difficult and how challenging, how challenging it is actually to write a life that, uh, you perform what what I was referring to earlier as a sort of in, in, in a way exploding the biography from the inside out. So, what I'm saying is, if 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 biography um, if, if biography is just used sort of to, to reproduce a, a certain type of persona, it doesn't make sense to continue it. Yeah? But if if biography uh, is actually used as um, in a way, as a tool, sort of to demonstrate its own constructedness, you know? then I think it can be, be, become incredibly in, uh, interesting and, 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 and powerful, you know? uh, because it is a way of sort of putting all the problems that you put that that you uh, 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 identified to put them very explicitly on the table. So. Um, the fact that archives are subsumed under uh, uh, under another name that. Uh, collaborators in an office are not mentioned that uh, and so on and so forth um, and um, so so that is uh, so i think uh, that in a way bio biography can serve as an incredibly powerful anti-canonical uh, tool that's basically what i'm trying to say uh, and not by sort of replacing one genius cult with the other but again, by showing how uh, uh, complicated and interesting it is to again try to to try to uh, establish this link between a work yeah, and the world around it through through an individual and through uh, uh, through 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 the uh, the entity of an individual. I think the word life really helps, you know, when you talk about life rather than a person, because um, life, you know, we, we're not really the agents and authors of our own lives. I mean, that's very difficult. It's so circumstantial. And there's much about our lives, which are very generic and shared. Um, you know, the biological nature of the stages of life is pretty kind of archetypical, um, or the generational experiences that different, you know, it's very different to be in your 20s in the 60s to being in your 20s in the 80s and our lives are kind of marked by bigger historical economic uh, political cultural forces and all this is in the story of a life that, that doesn't necessarily require you to talk about somebody's inner psychological dramas their childhood trauma their sexual fantasies you don't need all that in order to talk about the relationship between a creative individual the context and the production of, of works. Yeah. Yeah. I think I it was like this observation of like that this star architect system uh, started to like reproduce, you know, and go, get like more um, more omnipresent. Mm -hmm. um, so so you know, um, it's a question if it has to do with globalization, uh, you know. So maybe there there is another level of this discussion of the. Of the authorship and um, and of the biography, you know, that like some some names get so powerful that they suddenly become really like global entities, you know, like or labels. 
Uh, I think that this is something maybe which it, what is maybe Colas also referring to. And then, yeah, and, and then maybe they don't even like then are able to control like the, the narrative uh, of, uh, of uh, what's, what's going on with a name as a label, you know, maybe without like any, any content or um, like, or, or like all kinds of meanings behind it. So, so this is just my observation on, on the recent times, you know, because it's, it's just like this internet and omnipresence of media and images and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Um, building building on that, I was just wondering if overlaid on top of each other rhetorically in our in the way we want to care so much about individual people's lives is two separate forces. One is um, related to celebrity culture, and it's been said that celebrities are our Greek gods, our myths. You know, we they're type forms that give us role models, um, help us model ourselves on them. Um, and I wonder if that sort of star culture just falls into the celebrity category, you know, the signature of Gary and, and so on. But I guess for me, there's like something else at stake in, in um, proper names, um, and which is more along the lines of what Lacan saw in Joyce, uh, the, uh, you know, or the, ori the originality of Joyce's relationship to his subjectivity or what he and Nora Barnacle uh, what extents they would go to to be individual um and I, I think uh, at least within sort of my reality like something that is that the idea of of an author holds a promise of is is actually sort of breaking free from the the type norms that are often thrown to us by society and actually um you know uh, reaching a kind of autonomy which is critical um, and I think these things kind of overlay on each other. One's a stereotypical self that society gives you a mold in which to fall into. And then against that is this sort of challenge to become a truly authentic self, to borrow some existentialist vocabulary, Andrea. Um, and so, you know, when I look at sort of Cool House, because uh, I, I see him as one of the most strong-willed individuals of his generation, as much as he's a celebrity star architect. I think one of the reasons we all keep returning to his work is it has such a, um, a voice, such a kind of clear voice. And I don't mean to kind of, you know, sanctify him in saying this. It's not about, um, you know, him as a kind of role model. It's about his capacity to um, just speak differently to other people, to, um, to have a kind of coherent place from which he speaks. Uh, I mean, he's probably got embroiled in, in the system and, and maybe that's all got dissolved, but at, at certain moments, I think he operates as an intellectual that's rare in the field of architects. And so there's some place in which, uh, yeah, the, I think that's what attracts at least um, maybe academics, uh, art historians, more so to authors. And I think this is the way, um, just a, one final point, um, Martin Jay has a really interesting article, which I read recently. Um, it's called uh, Name Dropping or Dropping Names, um, Modes of Legitimation in the Humanities. Um, and it's all, you know, pointing out how if uh, Foucault and Bath and all these people were all about, you know, getting beyond the author and into the text, <laughs> why do their proper names operate in the way they do in the discourse? You know, why do we, why does our discourse revolve around Derrida, Foucault? Lacan uh, and so on. And I think there's a kind of discourse function to these names as well um, that help us uh, navigate certain kind of problems really quickly uh, as well. But it's an, it's an irony. <laughs> it's, no, absolutely. It's, it's a total irony. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, it's a, no, it, but, it, I mean, the name is, of course, always a kind of shorthand. It's a shorthand for a character, for a position, for a... Uh, but there too can, I think, um, um, biography can be a very interesting way of sort of complicating that shorthand again. Uh, 